interested in everything, committed to none. How many of you felt this thing at some point in your life? I'm sure quite a few. For me, it defined my state of mind during college years and even few years after that. The whole idea of doing something really creative, exciting, or if I can say cool, was always there on my mind. Maybe in social space, in development side, or even startups, there was that burning desire to do something impactful. But what happened? As always, a lot of questions, a lot of analysis, a lot of daydreaming, but hardly any answers. And during that time, I realized, finally, what I was doing was creating too many choices for myself. I was just running away. And that time, I told myself, Manu, end of the day, you have two choices. Either get on with it and do something what you really want to do, or just sit back on your cushiony chair and climb the corporate ladders. At that time, I decided to take the road less traveled, as they say. But before zooming in to my story, I would like to zoom out a little bit and develop the context around my story, the state of education in India. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to request all of you to stand up. And I'm going to ask you to just imagine yourself as little kids. I'm pretty sure it's good to feel young, no? <laughs> so just imagine that you guys represent 100% of Indian children. And let's go with the school life. Let's just see how it pans out. You're around five years old, about to step into the school. But I have to take a pause here. I have to ask the f this first row to sit down. Why I'm doing saying that? Because 4% of Indian children never even enter school. Let's move on. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. About the time when you start liking school, friends, I have to again take a pause and ask this middle row to sit down. The whole, the whole <laughs> why I'm saying that. Because 40 to 50% of Indian students drop out when they're around this age. Let's move on. 13, 14, 15, 16. About to enter the college, the most exciting years of our life. Again, I have to take a pause and ask all of you to sit down, the back two rows to sit down. And why I'm saying that? Because only 10 to 15 percent of Indian students reach college. These percentages are huge. I can imagine you're thinking that. And when you talk about India, the numbers are even higher. But today, I want you to not think about these numbers. Today, I want you to think about the faces of the individuals behind these numbers. Because they get lost when we talk about numbers and numbers and numbers. Just imagine if the guys who were stand, sitting in the first time and the second time, if they never would have gotten an opportunity to get an equal and quality education, and then deciding for themselves what they want to do with it. Just capture that thought in your mind right now. Just capture that feeling. And I will come back to that. Like every story has a beginning, mine began when I joined Teach for India in 2009. And I was placed in a school called Valley View in the suburbs of Pune. It's a community school catering to low-income community. And let me remind you, when I went there, there was no value to view. But there was an amazing view, amazing view of 48 kids jam-packed in a small classroom around seven years of age with super cool and amazing energy just bubbling out every single time when I saw them. In that moment, I realized. 
I realize the magnitude of the responsibility I share on my shoulders. I told myself, Manu, you are in one hell of a ride for next two years. So better gear up. But for the first three months when I thought I'll go and I'll start teaching, I had that was the last thing I did. Because first three months, the goal became to just connect with these 48 lives. Just get dissolved in the system and understand where they're coming from. Or even making sure that they don't jump around the benches and hurt each other. Because <laughs> parents were there to check on me, the young guy who's teaching them. And how did I do that? From creating in innovative instruction plans to behavioral management systems, the buzzwords, to the technology, and also, with all honesty, a self-proclaimed superhero in the classroom. Yes, when you're teaching tiny tots, you have to be a superhero who can do everything. <laughs> Observing, absorbing, reflecting, and applying became part of my everyday cycle. I won't be making a huge statement here today if I say those two years of teaching these kids was the most holistic leadership experience of my lifetime, and it today still exists and remains close to my heart. But things were not rosy as I'm making them sound to be. This is a writing sample of a student which basically reflects the whole average after six months of teaching when I gave them a picture just to them to write what they see. And that time I realized the urgency of the work I was doing. The academic gap existed in my classroom. And I realized what all I have to do in the next 15 minute, months to bridge this gap. Luckily, during that time only, Teacher India introduced a concept. A concept of big goals. It's like a dream which a teacher can think for his students to demonstrate the highest level of learning. And there's only one criteria, highest expectations. And as my class was always democratic, we decided together that by the end of two years, my students, the third graders, will publish a book with 48 stories of their own imagination, their own thoughts, and the best language possible. When I looked this, at that time, it was daunting. It was overwhelming just to think of writing. It was not something very mathematical. Math was easy to teach. But it gave me a platform with which I can integrate everything for the next 15 minutes, months. We created word clouds. I took them to the libraries, reading sessions. Even took them to the Indian National Air Force Academy for holistic learning. We even danced a little bit. It was not always teaching, teaching, teaching. And how can I forget my two biggest friends, a duster and chalks, which I use every day to teach the students. And today, I stand in front of you with greater sense of satisfaction and pride. This is the same student which you just saw in three slides back who wrote these things that when it was about to end those two years. And not only him. The 40 students actually published a book where they all had their previous samples and their real samples. So they could actually see how much they have come in 15 months. And we actually published a book called Ultimate Writers. It's not only about English or language or education. There were many more things which I experienced, which was part of my vision during those two years. And I would like to show you a small video and then use that video as a metaphor to describe that. This video has been shot in up 12,000 feet in Himalayas where I spent one month teaching in a Buddhist school during my summer break. Let's have a look. Two, three, start. So what they say? They say knowledge is power. So read, baby, read. Read, baby, read. More you read, more you learn. Knowledge is power. Power is freedom, and I want it. And this described my vision for my kids. 
It was about giving them the sense of freedom. It was about they standing up, looking in the eyes of the people around them and asking the questions. They challenging the conventional wisdom. For my students, sky was not the limit. Now, to the end, I would like to close by talking about what I gained when I reflect back from these two years. And whenever I reflect, there are three things which comes to my mind. The first one, power of empathy. In the world of today, how much we need to empathize. We need to understand where other people come from, putting ourselves in their positions. And these kids taught me that. Empathy helps you to empower people. Second thing is humility, being humble. There are today 700 more people like me who are teaching in classrooms as a teacher in India grows. I respect each and every one of them. Being humble, I'm still trying, I'm not there, is something which, which really sets you free from all the egos and ambitions and all that stuff. And you just play your role. And lastly, which for me has been the difficult thing, but I'm still, still trying every day, I'm being conscious, is moving away from the transactional nature of everything today we do, be it relationships, be it friendships, be it work. As an MBA, I like to calculate return on investments. But how can I put a number when I see a student who never was writing anything for six months and suddenly showed me what he's written, the smile on his face? How can I put a number on the face of the parents who were overwhelmed when they saw the book their students published and when they told me, can you stay a little more? And I remind myself with one quote, I live for experiences so that I can tell stories. And like every story has an end, here I end mine. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias.